after discussing the definition as well as the pathogenesis of the right ventricular failure now let us discuss about uh, the clinical features as well as uh, the laboratory findings of the right ventricular failure okay so we'll see what are the clinical as well as laboratory findings over here in the right heart failure first we need to concentrate this there will be distension of internal jugular veins right distension of internal jugular veins whenever there is a accumulation of blood in the superior vena cava automatically there will be accumulation of the blood in the jugular veins so there will be distension of the jugular veins so increased volume of the blood in the venous system behind the right ventricle is responsible for the distension of the internal jugular veins and next will be will be the tricuspid valve regurgitation may develop in the right heart failure okay tricuspid valve regurgitation tricuspid valve regurgitation may be seen this is mainly due to stretching of the tricuspid valve ring from the right ventricular volume overload for example if you say this if this is the right ventricle okay if this is the right ventricle and this is the tricuspid valve over here tricuspid valve whenever the right ventricular volume is very high it pushes the tricuspid valve ring so there will be a stretching of the tricuspid valve ring because of the volume overload of the right ventricle there will be an upward push of the tricuspid valve and there will be a stretching of the tricuspid valve transversely that may cause non compliant tricuspid valve responsible for the development of tricuspid regurgitation okay so the tricuspid regurgitation may develop because of stretching of the tricuspid valve ring from the right ventricular volume overload okay this is what it is next what is the another important finding we will see here there will be right sided this is very important right sided s3 and s4 third heart sound as well as fourth heart sounds are present so where you can see the summation gallop rhythm so right sided third heart sound as well as fourth heart sounds are more commonly present on the right side of the heart it is mainly because of volume overload of the right ventricle so remember that both the sounds are heard due to the volume overload of the right ventricle over here so this is the distension of the internal jugular vein tricuspid valve regurgitation right sided heart sounds can be heard that is s3 as well as s4 and there will be an important feature called as painful hepatomegaly painful hepatomegaly okay the painful hepatomegaly is mainly due to why there is a painful hepatomegaly it is mainly due to centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis i will write it as centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis is responsible for the development of painful hepatomegaly so why there is a centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis and why painful hepatomegaly is seen in the right ventricular failure we need to see we know that there will be an accumulation of the blood in the venous system of the body that is systemic venous blood backs up into the hepatic veins and then into the central venules for example if you see this this is the liver drains into hepatic vein hepatic vein drains into inferior vena cava inferior vena cava drains into like you know right atria right atria to right ventricle so there will be a backup pooling of the blood from the liver okay up to the liver so now what happens is the systemic venous blood backs up into the hepatic veins and then into the central venules central venules central venules 
of the liver. So what happens is these central venules expand with the blood and cause hepatic cell necrosis in the zone 3 central venules expansion. This leads to hepatic cell necrosis in the zone hepatic cell necrosis in the zone 3 hepatic cell necrosis in the zone 3. So remember that there will be a painful hepatomegaly okay I am explaining you the pathogenesis of this painful hepatomegaly okay. So central venules undergo expansion because of the accumulation of the blood and cause hepatic cell necrosis in the zone 3. So this is what is seen in the condition of painful hepatomegaly. Next will be another important feature, increase in liver enzymes like serum transaminase as well as alanine aminotransferase. There will be an increase in serum transaminase as well as you know uh, serum transaminases like aspartate transaminase as well as alanine aminotransferases. So AST will be elevated and ALT will be elevated, remember that. AST will be elevated as well as ALT will be markedly increased. So whenever there is an increase pressure which is transmitted to the sinusoids of the liver, so from the sinusoids of the liver central veins to like portal vein because the portal vein drains into sinusoids whenever the sinusoids are blocked the portal vein cannot drain its uh, blood into the liver sinusoid. So, there will be a portal venous hypertension. There will be a portal venous hypertension. So, portal vein hypertension is more commonly associated with congestion of the liver is mainly due to the right heart failure. So, this portal vein hypertension can produce ascites. So, long standing cases of long standing cases of right ventricular failure can cause portal vein hypertension can lead to the development of ascites right whenever there is an increase in the portal vein pressure remember that it produces ascites next will be another important point what about compression of the congested liver so whenever there is a compression compression of congested liver Another important point, whenever there is a compression of the congested liver which increases jugular neck vein distension. So due to this, whenever there is an increase in the jugular neck vein distension, it is called as hepatojugular reflex. So you will see hepatojugular reflex, okay. Compression of the congested liver increases jugular neck vein distension that is called as hepatojugular reflex and other one will be because of the pooling of the blood in the especially lower part of the body due to the gravity there will be an edema that is dependent pitting edema more commonly seen in the lower limbs that is mainly due to an increase in the venous hydrostatic pressure. So seventh point will be there will be a pitting edema dependent dependent pitting edema dependent pitting edema is more commonly seen due to an increase in the venous hydrostatic pressure right so these are all the things what we will see in uh, as a clinical as well as laboratory findings another important point what we need to remember over here is cyanosis of the mucous membranes cyanosis of mucous membranes. There will be cyanosis of the mucous membranes. What is a cyanosis? It is a bluish discoloration of the skin which is called a cyanosis and this cyanosis is more likely to occur in the right sided heart failure when compared to that of the left sided heart failure. Even though I told you that the most common cause of the right heart failure is the left ventricular failure but in general if there is only left ventricular failure generally you do not see the cyanosis as an early stage because first uh, 
the left ventricular failure should develop right ventricular failure when right ventricular failure is developed then only you will see the cyanosis that is the reason cyanosis is an important feature of the right ventricular failure when compared to that of the left ventricular failure so cyanosis is the bluish discoloration of the skin so here there will be a bluish discoloration of the mucous membranes as well as skin is more commonly because of uh, there will be increase in the venous blood in the body that is because of the backup blood in the venous system especially in the right heart failure which increases the time that is available for the peripheral tissue especially to extract oxygen which decreases oxygen saturation enough to produce cyanosis that is the reason the cyanosis is seen in the right heart failure pause